Hey, Chiefs Kingdom, I know we've gotten a few more subscribers recently, but something tells me, oh wait, I checked the analytics on the YouTube channel, that most of you have not turned on notifications. What does that mean? A lot of you are like, I've already subscribed. Yep, that's great, I appreciate you guys, but when you turn on notifications, you'll never ever miss a video because you'll get a notification on your phone or tablet like, oh, Chiefs Report report uh, just published a video. Oh, here it is, Duh -duh -duh. click, I can watch the video. That's what I want from you guys. So all you gotta do after you subscribe, and if you haven't hit that sub button, turn on the notification bell and then select all. That means you will get a notification on your phone and you can watch our videos as soon as they are published because I don't want you to miss anything, including today's show, which is Overreaction Monday. All right, let's jump on into it. Is Tyree Kill the best wide receiver in the NFL? Guys, we got to talk more about what we witnessed on Sunday. It's not an exaggeration to say that this was one of the single best performances from a wide receiver in NFL history. Now, the yardage of 269 yards in this game, only 15th best. You say only, that's still a massive game. But you factor in the three touchdowns, including a 75-yard touchdown, and the fact that he had 203 yards in the first quarter alone. This was a clinical performance from Tyree Kill in which literally the Tampa Bay secondary had no clue on what to do to try and stop him until they finally started playing three deep safeties. Uh, here's Tyreek after the game, a little sarcastic. He got a little excited saying, I, obviously I'm a return specialist, so I'm going to see a lot of single coverage throughout the whole game. That reference is, of course, to Jalen Ramsey, who infamous, infamously called Tyreek a return specialist back in 2018. He ain't no return specialist. In fact, he might be the best receiver in the National Football League. Let me know what you guys think. Answer this question. Is he the best? Type Y for yes. Type N for no. We'll make this the pinned comment on today's video. Is the Cheetah the best wide receiver in the NFL? Go ahead and let me know right there. And you look at the yardage, it would say, yeah, this year he is. There's no doubt about that. Oh, shout out Travis Kelsey. He's just number two in the NFL in receiving yards. DeAndre Hopkins, McLaurin, Stephon Diggs, obviously guys like Michael Thomas are in the conversation as well. But when you factor in just how dangerous Tyreek Hill is with his speed, look, maybe he's not the purest wide receiver in the NFL. Maybe he doesn't run the best routes, but – I'm taking him over anybody because he is so electric out in space. You can't cover him in man coverage. Not saying that some of those other guys you can guard one-on-one, -on -one, but you at least have a chance because some of these DBs are fast enough. No, no corner in the NFL can keep up with Tyreek Hill speed-wise. That's why the Bucs finally double, started double covering him and adding an extra safety back there because they knew they couldn't stop him. And then, yeah, Travis Kelsey started to eat as well. And that kind of shifts into this next point, and the Chiefs' offense are unstoppable. The only team that can stop the Chiefs is the Chiefs themselves, and that's kind of what happened in this game, right? 17-0 lead, first and goal at the 8 with a chance to go up 24-0 and blow this game open, and Patrick Mahomes gets strip-sacked. Otherwise, this is an absolute blowout. You easily have the MVP in the National Football League. We'll talk about that more in a second, Patrick Mahomes. But this game, the score does not indicate how dominant Kansas City was and should have, uh, and should have indicated on the score as well. But they kind of – I don't want to say they lack the killer instinct, but they relax at times, which is a little bit frustrating. When they're dialed in, when they're focused, no team in the NFL can slow this team down. It's just – not possible, and that's because uh, of a lot of reasons I've already mentioned, but led by this guy, Patrick Mahomes, I don't know if I ever can remember a quiet 462 yards and three touchdowns, but that's kind of how it felt yesterday because a lot of that damage was done in the first half. He just continues to play at such a high level, and I, I remember the uh, the haters earlier in the season. Oh, I, even a couple of you guys, uh, Patrick Mahomes, he hasn't been as good since he was in 2018. Guys, he's so much improved, it's not even close. 30 touchdowns and two picks this year. It's ridiculous. And then you've got these two guys who we've already talked about quite a bit, the two leading receivers in the NFL. One of them just happens to be a tight end. Like, how do you slow this team down? The only way you do is if the Chiefs have self-inflicted errors. That is the only way you stop uh, Kansas City. And I saw, and there was a few plays in that game. Like I mentioned, the strip sack. Also, Mahomes slightly throws a ball behind McCole Hardman. He's still running for an 89-yard touchdown if he hits him in stride. A couple of those little, you know, weird things get worked out. You're talking about like a 42-10 to 10 game the other day. And unfortunately, it ended up being a lot closer. Kansas City still won. But my point in all of this is, 
the Chiefs' offense is absolutely lethal and unstoppable unless they stop themselves. Here was Patrick Mahomes after the game yesterday saying at the beginning of the game, uh, instead of that safety going over the top of Tyreek, he was going over Travis. That's just a problem that defenses have uh, when they go against us. We have so many good weapons. It's hard to try to take away one guy when we can just go to the other guy. This week was Tyreek's week, and he's right. Early on in the game, man coverage on Tyreek. Let's launch a couple of balls downfield. 75-yard touchdown, 50-yard touchdown. Oh, double and triple him. Uh, Travis Kelsey is just going to work the middle of the field and absolutely dominate. He ends up with 85 yards as well. Like, too many weapons. Sammy Watkins is back. Demarcus Robinson, McCole Harmon, they're everywhere. Oh, by the way, Clyde edwards helaire and Le'Veon Bell, yeah, they're pretty good NFL running backs as well. Now, if you think the MVP race is over, by the way, it should be, type MVPAT. Let me know if you think it's over. Cast your vote, or not even vote, just type it, MVPAT, down in the comment section. And <laughs> look at the latest odds. Like, it would indicate uh, this gap is widening. Pat Mahomes minus 500 uh, on our latest uh, NFL MVP odds with our partners, BetUS. Aaron Rodgers had a great game last night against Chicago. Russell Wilson, those two guys are still in the mix. But unless Mahomes uh, either A, gets injured, or B, just falls off a cliff, which there's no evidence that's going to happen, he's going to win his second MVP in three seasons. Shout out Derrick Henry, having a great season with the Tennessee Titans. If you want to bet on Mahomes to win the MVP, better do it now because the odds are widening as we speak. Go to our sports betting partner, BetUS. Use this link, chatsports.com slash chiefsbet. Don't Google BetUS because you're not going to get the promo deal. Use Chiefs125 to get that 125% deposit bonus when you go to chatsports.com slash Chiefs bet. And I get you guys, you know, tweeting me and uh, messaging in the comments like, oh, I don't know about you, bet US. I don't know about sports betting. Well, hey, if you need a little bit more incentive, we've extended our jersey deal for you new customers only through Sunday night football. Chiefs play the Broncos on Sunday night. Through that game, you can get a free jersey if you sign up with bet US. A deposit, place that initial bet. Once you do that, email us, chiefs at chatsports.com to redeem. Make the subject line like bet US deal, and we will hook you guys up with a free Chiefs jersey. But I can't emphasize it enough. You got to use the link when you get going with bet US. That is chatsports.com slash chiefs bet. Of course, that promo code is chiefs125. All right, let's talk about the offensive line because we just spent a few minutes on how this offense is unstoppable. The one area teams at least have a chance to slow uh, Kansas City down. This O-line is A, a little bit beat up, and B, just not performing at that high of a level. Obviously, they miss R Mitchell Schwartz at right tackle, but the center position's been in flux. They started Austin Ryder at the big beginning of the year, went to Daniel Kilgore. They've gone back to Ryder, which I don't really know why. Obviously, they, Mitch Col they miss Colecci Simile at the left guard spot as well. I think Nick Algretti has been okay, but Andrew Wiley's not a great right guard. There's a reason uh, he had to earn a roster spot out of training camp. Now, if all of the guys were available at your disposal, not including a simile because he's done for the year, but this is the five I would roll out. I think this group of five would give you a much better chance to be successful. You leave the left side the same, Eric Fisher, Nick Algretti, although Martinez Rankin was completely healthy. Maybe you could argue him at left guard. I would go back to Kilgore. I think he was better in the few games that he played, but for some reason they've gone back to Austin Ryder. I'd slide Mike uh, Rimmers to right guard from right tackle once Schwartz is healthy. Then obviously Schwartz is in there as well. I think this group of five gives you the best chance to protect Patrick Mahomes and be a little bit better in the run game as well because uh, the Chiefs could not run the ball at all against uh, Tampa Bay, but it doesn't matter when you can throw for 475 yards like Patrick Mahomes can. How concerned are you about the Chiefs' offensive line? Scale it from 1 to 10. 1 being this is the best O-line in the league. 10 being uh, I'm panicking. This could be a disaster. I'm not, I'm not there. I'm at like a 5 or 6, but... Uh, Mahomes had to make some adjustments yesterday. There were a few uh, drives where uh, he was getting pressured on like three and five step drops. He was having to get the ball out. So I'll, I'm at a six. I'm a little bit concerned. Hopefully Mitchell Schwartz can get healthy for the playoff run. Let's talk Sammy Watkins. He came back uh, for the first time since week five, four catches, 38 yards. Uh, not a huge impact, but he played about 70% of the snaps, which was good to see. He seems uh, ready to rock after missing about two months, which is a lot longer than any of us expected. But this is a big stretch for him because – don't forget, he is a free agent after this year. And if he's looking to cash in, obviously uh, he restructured his deal this year, but he's willing. Uh, uh, is he willing to uh, take less again next year? He's probably going to want to maximize his earnings, whether it be in Kansas City or elsewhere. If he's looking to take top dollar, he'll have to sign elsewhere. But 
only 200 and something yards, a couple of touchdowns this year. He's He gets banged up every year. He really needs a healthy and productive month and a half, two months, you know, counting in the playoff run as well. If he wants to get paid this offseason, we'll have to wait and see. I'm glad to see him back. Uh, hopefully he gets more and more involved over the next few weeks. Will the Chiefs re-sign Watkins after this season? Type 1 for yes, type 2 for no. I'm leaning no at this point just because you can't bring back everybody. Look, if he wants to sign a one-year deal for like five, six million, sure, bring him back. Don't think that's going to be super likely, so I'm going to type my 2 for no. And the reason I don't think it's super likely is, A, you got Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey. Uh, B, McCole Hardman. I still want to see him get a bigger role. For some reason, that has not happened this year. I don't know if Andy Reid and Eric Bieniemy don't trust him enough yet, but uh, maybe by next year he's ready. I think you've got guys uh, who can step up. Demarcus Robinson's also a free agent. Uh, I was shocked when both him and Watkins came back this year. Uh, I can't imagine both are back in Kansas City next year. Maybe you bring back Robinson for cheaper and Watkins walks in free agency. We'll have to wait and see, but we're focused about this year. Forget, forget the offseason. Forget next year. When we get there, we'll talk about those type of things, but I am excited for the stretch run. Ten and one. Let's go. Let's get that number one seed. Need Pittsburgh to lose. Cheer against them on Tuesday. If that game happens, it may not because uh, the Ravens keep testing positive. We will wait and see. Big stretch run for Sammy. Make sure to subscribe, and we will see you next time.